Chair, now recognizes the gentlelady from Colorado, Ms. Bobert, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, there, there is a, a rise and fall in our communities, as Ms. Stansbury um, pointed out, but it's not just because of the oil and gas industry and the ebbs and flows of that. It's because of politicians and their bad policies that they're forcing on Americans. I know many communities um, have experienced a very large fall from the rise that they had uh, because they are being regulated into poverty. And, uh, you know, we're not subject to oil and gas. We are subject, unfortunately, to climate extremists, forcing us all to bow at the left's altar of climate change. And I'm very glad that um, Ms. Stansberry has admitted to the people here in the People's House, uh, the American people, that the Inflation Reduction Act wasn't about reducing inflation. It was the Green New Deal. A con game, title it one way, do another thing, spend money another way. It wasn't to reduce inflation, it was the Green New Deal. You know, back home in Colorado, I've seen firsthand the harm leftist policies have created in my communities. Colorado's Western Slope used to have a booming energy production. We used to have about 112 rigs operating on the Western Slope, and now we have four. Extreme leftist policies lock up land, They've driven away good paying American jobs and have helped drive up gas prices. With the stroke of his pen, Joe Biden waged an all out war against American energy production, propping up Vladimir Putin on day one of his administration from shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline, imposing new rules to block pipeline projects, canceling oil and gas leases on millions of acres of land in Alaska and in the Gulf of Mexico, imp imposing a moratorium on new federal oil and gas leases on federal lands, failing to meet the statutory deadlines uh, for quarterly lease sales, and took countless other anti-energy measures that have contributed to increased gas prices and inflation reaching record levels. Rather than shutting down production here at home and begging Iran and Venezuela and OPEC to produce energy for us, we should be producing it right here and relying on the American roughneck, the hardworking American roughneck that you are taking food out of their children's mouths to prop up your energy scams. We do it cleaner and better than anyone else. Now, my first question, thank you, witnesses, for being here today, is for you, Ms. Uh, Sagama. Thank you for traveling from Colorado to be with us. You discussed the increased bureaucracy around lease suspensions and permit extensions. What can we in Congress do to ensure that these agencies spend their time reducing the current ABT, a, APD backlog, which sits at almost 5,000, versus haggling over these paperwork exercises? I appreciate the question. Um, you know, just specify the, that an APD term is for four years instead of two. Because right now, when we try to get an extension, um, we're having to justify it quarterly. So it's a lot of extra paperwork churn. So just make the term four. Thank you. Ms. Sagama, we've heard um, rumblings that the Bureau of Land Management may suspend approving all APDs um, due to the Tenth Circuit's decision last Friday. In your opinion, does the BLM need to do this, or is there a way to address this decision quickly and allow APD approvals? Yeah, it's really easy to find a NEPA deficiency in court. And in this case, um, the judge found that BLM didn't consider a carbon budget. There's no law passed by Congress that requires a carbon budget. Um, but BLM could quickly explain that, no, we didn't consider a carbon budget for because of that reason I just specified. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an easy corrective NEPA fixed. It shouldn't be affecting any other permits in New Mexico or anywhere else. That does sound like an easy fix, Ms. Sagama. Now, in your testimony, you touch on the 9,000 unused lease permits, um, leases and permits numbered um, used by the Biden administration last year when blaming producers for high energy prices. Could you explain, please, to us here today uh, why these leases and permits cannot simply be used? Well, you're never gonna operate on 100% of leases. So right now we're at a 66% utilization rate, 
And so that's a good high number. So if there's about 12,000 non-producing leases, um, there are 23,000 producing leases. So um, that's a good mix, uh, just because sometimes economic resources are not found on a particular lease. When it comes to permits, it's there are other approvals that are necessary for permits, and we have several held up in court cases. So there are various reasons that a permit doesn't get used immediately. Thank you very much, Ms. Sagama, and thank you so much to the other witnesses for being here. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.